Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for a very special event to honor uh, George Purdue. My name is Tucker Slingerland. I'm the CEO of Hudson Headwaters. And it's a great honor to be here tonight in front of so many people that work closely with George for so long. There are some formal aspects of um, my part of this presentation, but before I get to that, I'd like to just say a few things about George, who was a very special person for, for all of us. And I think George was one of those incredible people that had inc just amazing visionary uh, insight into uh, the future. And, you know, it's fitting that I'm standing here in front of a sign that says healthcare for everyone, because that's, I think, the mantra that, that George lived for. And, uh, and, and, but getting from that to reality is two different things. And there were so many practical per um, assignments and tasks that George did that really impacted the network and set the network up to succeed. Uh, I think first and foremost, jo um, George believed in the potential of the network. And that um, is a hard thing to do, especially during days when uh, there was probably major stressors, which Dr. Ruddy will likely mention. Um, mm -hmm. But George knew that there was great potential here. And he worked hard every day to make sure that we maximize the opportunity. And that's really a tradition that we um, are trying to uh, expand upon every day here at Hudson Headwaters. And you know, there are some concrete examples of George's work uh, that were um, you know, very familiar to all of us. I think you know, starting north, the Champlain Family Health, George, George really helped pick that site. Uh, Plattsburgh, uh, also a new health center for us, expanded access to about 8,000 patients. Uh, in under two years, George uh, picked that site. Um, he believed in the potential of our 90 South building, uh, which became our OBGYN practice. Uh, he believed in the potential of our uh, pediatric practice in the building that we've uh, since uh, repurposed. Uh, and this entire campus was also uh, part of George's vision, working very closely with, with Dr. Ruggie and, and Chris Turnier and they knew that there was just tremendous potential. There are also things that George helped make happen that were not so obvious. Um, 340B, along with Jim Donnelly, uh, they recognized very early the potential of that program, and probably more than anything, it, it, it can be credited for, for the reach of the network today. Uh, also, we also keep finding things that George uh, envisioned that we, um, you know, at the time probably didn't make a lot of sense, but made a huge amount of um, opportunity for us, including the 6,000 square feet that he advocated for in the, in the basement of West Mountain 2. Uh, we've since put a pulmonary practice in that location. And, you know, it sat empty for quite a while, but George knew that the day would come when we would need it. Um, there was some extra space at, at the Warrensburg Health Center. Uh, where our specialists work. But just last week, our new archives division got up and running, uh, staffed by uh, Paula and Dr. Ruggie. And, um, but also things like purchasing the buildings next door, which was a sign company. You know, George had no idea that we would be launching a mobile division uh, this February, and that the mobile units were gonna be really big. Um, and those buildings came in really, are gonna come in really handy for that. Uh, that purpose. Um, but he was also a great uh, personality and friend to many people. He uh, had a knack for debating strategic decisions with Dr. Ruggie, sort of unlike anyone else. Uh, but when he was given his marching orders, as he would call them, he got things done. And, and he also was the guy that was always in the background. Um, not looking for attention or credit, um, but listening carefully and making smart decisions. And it's that humble type of service that I think uh, is most inspiring. I also you know, personally can say that every once in a while someone comes along that really impacts you personally. And um, there were certainly times when early on for me, I, the assignment or the role was a little vague 
by design. <laughs> and um, George would pull me aside. I remember one time in particular uh, in the copy room, and George said, keep your head up, keep going, you're on track, someday you'll be able to do great things here. So, um, so things like that that really mean a lot. And so it's a great honor to dedicate this building in George's memory. Um, we will place this plaque on the outside of the building. Um, we will refer to this as the George Purdue Building. Um, and this other plaque, uh, which I was saying earlier, does not look like the Adirondacks, but George was an avid international level mountaineer. Um, and it's just a great picture that we're thrilled to have here uh, in our building. And more importantly, um, we also are announcing a scholarship for students at the Indian Lake Central School uh, who um, have aspirations of going to college. And so with that, uh, George's name and the things that his family uh, value uh, will live on uh, forever, we hope. So with that, I will hand over to Dr. Ruggie, who looks much more prepared uh, than me, but um, my honor, Dr. Ruggie. No pressure. So I'm here, I think, in my HHH role, Hudson Headwaters historian, <laughs> and should tell you something about this building. So along about 2007, Hudson Headwaters had outgrown its headquarters in Warrensburg and was spilling over into the old Broad Street School along with the consortium, our consortium of health centers. And one month, the, the um, owner indicated the lease was going to go up. And so George began to scout around town, looked, for example, at the warehouse near Hannaford's in Queensbury, but finally settled on Cary Industrial Park right here. But it wasn't always easy. For one, he had to go before the Queensbury Town Board, and they asked a, a difficult question for him to address. And the question was, isn't this too nice for this neighborhood? But he got through it. And we have this center, originally built with everything behind the wall behind us, or in front of us, still with a dirt floor. We couldn't afford, we couldn't afford flooring but thought that would turn into a health center and included Hudson Hill Waters administrative staff, consortium administrative staff, and here we are. But George and I went back a ways, not all the way back. I first got to see George when he was 15 in 1977 at the Chester Health Center for his school physical, high school. The, um, that led for him to go off to college, SUNY Albany, an MBA, a place where we send more Indian Lake students. So George will be able to do that. The, um, I've come to think that probably the reason George came from Indian Lake all the way to Chester to see me was to serve as a scout for Dick, his father. Since a year later, Dick, a supervisor of Indian Lake, invited Hudson Hill Waters to come to Indian Lake and have a health center there too. So George was there from the, from the beginning, along with Dick. The, um, so George, having gone through MBA school, went to work for a time and interned, if you will, at GE, and then came to join not Hudson Hill Waters, but North Care, you Adirondack Medical Center, I'm sorry, Adirondack Medi Medical Institute, Adirondack Medicine, Inc., and also the consortium, Director of Information Services. Then went off to Home Healthcare Services to learn the world from the payer side. But finally, in 2002, came back to us, to Hudson Hill Waters initially for information services, but not long thereafter to be our chief administrative officer. It was kind of a challenging time. Um, reimbursement was not so terrific and Medicaid suddenly realized it was cross-subsidizing other payers and cut back. So as George stepped into the role, he found he had in the bank $2,000 to work with. 
So most organizations consider 30 days cash on hand kind of necessary to assure against the stability. 90 days more likely to feel comfortable. By my calculation, George had 17 minutes cash on hand. <laughs> but at the same time, we had to have a new building. So here we were, uh, making strides, at least with half of a floor for the new facility. And we're here. But coming through all this, what George had the magic of was people, just buildings, in terms of how to pull them together, how to put them in a direction and move them along. I had my own style. My style was people will come and they couldn't do something. So I did everything I wanted to do to just step in. What can I do? And I'll do whatever I can't do. Which doesn't work very well very long as you get bigger. George's technique was something else, and that was to bring them in, sit them down, and say, here's the problem we have to address, and here's how I think you might go about it. And if that doesn't work, you and I are going to have to have a very difficult conversation. And somehow those difficult conversations were never necessary. People found their way to live up to George's expectations, and they did. So, here we are, not only with half a floor, but the full floor. We never got a health center in this building because we needed it all for leadership space, but we have a campus. And we are so fortunate to have this facility. And we were always so fortunate to have George as our builder. And now we're really fortunate to have them come together. And he will be here forever with us at Hudson Hill Waters is an example of what we can do working together with that kind of vision, that kind of energy, and that kind of skill. Thank you, Dick. Last time. I think you're next. Huh? I think you're next. Wow. <laughs> well, I have to have a microphone to speak to. I think you're on. You're on. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, wired. Okay. Well, I'd like to greet the Zoomies out there. <laughs> you know what? And, uh, you can take your mask off. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't mind. Temple is in my head. It always comes off with it. There. See my glasses and my hearing aid, everything comes off at the same time. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, I, I can't tell you how grateful I and members of my family and, and his friends and associates are to have this occasion. I never expected it, and it's, to me, it's, it's very gratifying. And it's, it's great to talk to people that I've heard so much about over the years, but never met personally. And uh, that's kind of a thrill for me. Uh, Dr. Slingerlands came up quite often. I think he was a kind of a heir apparent to Dr. Ruggie, and uh, George had a very good respect for, for Dr. Slingerlands. And overall, the experience that, that George had, while it was very successful from an administrative uh, point of view, from the point of view of health care in, in the North Country, it was also a lot more than that. It had a lot to do with uh, love, respect, <clears throat> and joy, because of, in the course of his history, uh, he had a lot of pleasure 
and he loved it to accomplish things. He loved the people he worked with. Uh, he and Dr. Ruggie were like peas in a pod, even though they're quite different in their uh, temperaments. For some magical reason, they just fit together like a Rubik's cube. And I don't think they ever exchanged a, uh, an angry or a critical word. It just, it just amazed me that, because they, they're not, not similar personalities, really. Yes, I fast cars. <laughs> well, it, it, I think it was a wonderful uh, uh, com combination. Uh, it worked, and it was part of that pattern of love, affection, and joy that went into George's career. As, as, it's wonderful to meet a few of the people that, that he worked with, uh, to meet them tonight. Uh, I appreciate very much the uh, work of the network in, in uh, promoting the scholarship program, uh, which I think is highly appropriate. Uh, it fits into what George would have wanted. Uh, it fits into what Indian Lake needs, the, what the kids there need. And it also marks the transition from, from grief to the pleasure of remembering. I mean, grief has to slowly go away. And <coughs> fond memories have got to replace the grief and become permanent. And that, that is what ha is happening, and that is what this event uh, this evening uh, commemorates. <clears throat> because it's just so appropriate and so timely, uh, it, it couldn't have been better from, uh, in terms of the timing. Even uh, in this kind of troublesome or troubled period in our history, it's great to have an event like this that is positive and forward-looking. I mean, we've all been kind of borne down by uh, COVID and uh, politics and international uh, uh, strife. This is a bright spot for me. It makes it possible or encourages my looking forward. And I think that probably affect, affects all of us in that manner. The, the history of, of George's uh, work with the network is very well laid out by Dr. Slingerlands and Dr. Ruggie. Uh, of course, I was in touch with George constantly during that process. And his in involvement as uh, administrative officer commenced when things were really pretty rough uh, in the uh, network. Uh, morale was low, cash was low, and uh, it, when he took over the administrative responsibility, a, a steady improvement in the situation of the network occurred. Uh, financially, in terms of morale, the whole spirit of the of the uh, network improved, not just because of George, but he w he really fit in, and uh, I think I think he kind of uh, uh, helped others get into a a positive state of mind, because his management approach was one of supporting the people he worked with, not so much. Uh, criticizing them, at least not being uh, hostile toward them, but more to be a counselor and to support them in doing their job. So uh, anger toward a department head on George's part was pretty much unheard of. He could be, he could have criticism, but he backed that up with support with advice 
and uh, help getting through whatever the stressful, stressful event might have been. In the course of his, of his work, there are some events that it kind, of, uh, kind of impressed me. Uh, 340B, the, uh, the, the pharmaceutical uh, reimbursement program, was really exciting, and he was excited about it. And uh, he, he and Jim Donnelly uh, worked overtime in a lot of strange places, talking to a lot of weird people. <laughs> uh, uh, and a lot, many of their trips around the country uh, did not produce any uh, a success. The program kept going and was a very important part of the history of, of the uh, network's uh, financial recovery. Uh, I think of the Athena program, the uh, electronic records uh, maintenance company. There was a little struggle there to get that going in the history of, ele of electronic record keeping. Uh, but gradually, everybody got on board. The doctors okayed it, and uh, the administrative side was well uh, uh, in support. That was a big step forward, in my opinion, and it's amazing to me that the doctors seem to have adjusted that damn computer. <laughs> <laughs> because it had to be, the transition had to be very difficult for, for, for a, lot of the, a lot of the doctors. And you've got to give them all credit for just knuckling down and, and learning. Because it had to come and it had to be perfected with the complexity of healthcare uh, as it has developed. Uh, I think also of the, uh, I don't know how George participated, but I think the increase in the wages of hourly employees extremely important to maintain the quality or improve the quality of uh, workers at the various health centers. And I noticed, uh, I have noticed myself in dealing with the Indian Lake Health Center, it just feels different. Uh, and the people that I've met at Ch in Chestertown also, uh, where I go to see Dr. Ruggie, uh, really impressed me with uh, their cooperation and their efficiency. And I think that that raise in the start minimum starting salary <coughs> was an important aspect of the improvement in personnel. Uh, the building program, I just can't say enough about the building program of the network. <laughs> George was a builder. I mean, that, it, in his head, he, he was definitely a builder. He, he built for the family, and uh, he built for himself, and he built for the network. He, no job was too small for him to get involved. There's a, a leak in the basement, I think it was at uh, uh, Moreau, and uh, he drove up there, I think it was on his time, to, to cut it off. And I, I, I asked him why he didn't just, just order somebody else to do it. And he said it's infeasible. And that was the kind of guy that he wanted. He admired them and very supportive of their, of their work. And his management style, as I said earlier, was one of around the network. Uh, I, I can't recall his ever treating a stress or operating problems of department heads uh, uh, crudely. It was always, we're a team, we're working together, and we're going to get through this all right. And uh, just invariably, that was the outcome. 
Uh, as to the uh, the scholarship, I, I'm probably running on too long, <coughs> but as to the scholarship for Indian Lake kids, I, I think that is such a, a great idea. There's so many kids in Indian Lake cannot look for a higher education because their parents cannot support even a, a, a community college education might be too much. So that uh, scholarship provides some incent incentive to kids to excel at their studies and become admissible uh, to, uh, to college. And it will help somebody do it where they could not have afforded it before. Uh, I hope that that tendency to provide support to the uh, graduates of Indian Lake Central School will, will uh, expand because uh, the George Purdue program will not be able to handle the whole thing. But it's a, it's a great step that, and I, I thank the network uh, profusely for standing up f for, that, for that program. So I've probably run off of the mouth long enough, <laughs> but I, I, I want to leave uh, every, everybody with my, and on behalf of not only myself, but my, my family, with my uh, deepest thanks for your ideas, your support, your, and for the program of hope for the future. And I thank you very much. That's it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janine Longacker. I'm the pre-K school counselor in pre-K through 12th grade, excuse me, school counselor at Indian Lake Central School. I'm also the scholarship coordinator for the district, and I am responsible for managing all the awards and scholarships that are given out to our seniors at the graduation ceremonies. It is an honor to be here today to celebrate the career of one of our one of our alumni, Mr. George Purdue. On behalf of the Indian Lake Central School, we are sincerely grateful to Hudson Headwaters Health Network for allowing us to take part in honoring the accomplishments of George Purdue and his wonderful work within Hudson Headwaters. It wasn't surprising to hear of George's accomplishments with Hudson Headwaters as it was apparent from his high school days at ILCS. Yes, we dug up the yearbook. That was fun. Um, interesting hairdos and such. Um, Purdue was involved with many extracurricular activities such as sports and civic clubs. Being such a small school, scholarship opportunities such as this will certainly be significant to help a deserving student. We feel privileged to be able to provide financial assistance to our students on an annual basis who are furthering their education by attending a university, college, or trade school. The generosity that Mr. Purdue is showing by sponsoring a scholarship is immeasurable. As educators, as we maneuver through these uncertain times, some things will never change, such as the impact of receiving a scholarship that will that scholarship will place in a young child's memories. Again, on behalf of the entire ILCS community, we thank Mr. Redu for helping our graduates fulfill their dreams. Thank you. So thank you everyone again for coming tonight and really heartfelt and heartwarming uh, messages here. And also it's clear that you know you never really know someone until you meet their parents and um, it's really remarkable uh, your comments um, and Mr. Purdue and your your obvious time that you spent with George. I mean you you are um, maybe more informed than even our best archivist of <laughs> details here. So, um, so we really, really um, appreciate that you were able to come and, and make such remarkable uh, comments that, that we will all remember. And um, so with that, I would like to present some plaques. And I, I think I could use a helper uh, because I want to stay up here. But these are to the Purdue family. And Jessica Rubin will help pass them out. 
for you to take home. Well, and it's the same picture that we have on the wall here. Um, and I'll hold them so that the camera can see too. And one more. To hang in the school. Thank you. Great. So thank you again, everyone. And have a good night and have fond memories of George Purdue and think of him always as you enter this building and admire our work across the region. Good night.